are finally back. It's Weather for Weather Geeks time here on Wednesday evening. It is the 12th day of July. I've had, of course, some time off of late. It was kind of a staycation. Didn't uh, travel too far, but did enjoy a little downtime and kind of uh, disengaging a little bit from social media and the day-to-day grind of the weather. The weather itself reasonably quiet in recent days. I wanted to start out this evening just with a uh, kind of a status check of where we've been temperature-wise. Of course, temperatures nationally have been a big story over the last uh, week or so with excessive heat in a lot of the U.S., especially in the Gulf Coast region, Texas, out towards Arizona, Southern California. Now, all these places, yeah, they should be hot in July, right? But this heat has a little more uh, significance to it because of the, the length of of time that some places are seeing extreme heat and uh, some of the absolute temperatures as well. But locally, yeah, we've been in the 80s every day, but uh, no big changes over the last couple of weeks. We had 85 for high today. Last week in the middle of the week, we had a couple of days where we flirted with 90, but yeah, generally speaking, it's been pretty ho-hum in the temperature department so far in July. Look at some early evening temperatures. Across the country, we have 108 in Phoenix, we have 98 in Albuquerque, Dallas baking at 104, Lubbock at 108, and yeah, it's hot in a lot of places all the way up into the mid-Mississippi Valley, but around the Great Lakes in the Northeast, once again, it is simply not that hot. Our weather today has been fine in some places, not so great in others. You know, I get comments every single year, of course, around the Trumbull County Fair. It always rains at the Trumbull County Fair, that's the uh, comment, and there is some truth to that, but it's a pretty simple explanation. It's not like the, the fair is cursed or something like that. The Trumbull County Fair occurs in mid-July. July is our wettest month of the year in our climate zone, so it's pretty rare to go an entire week in July with no rain. It happens, but not very frequently. So yeah, it's no surprise that it tries to rain some with a fair amount of frequency uh, uh, in Trumbull County at this time of the year. And as of this recording, at 7.09, we still had... Some downpours, unfortunately, around the fairgrounds. We had some heavy downpours earlier on this afternoon. We have a scattering of downpours, once again, kind of the same areas that had some bouts of heavy rain earlier on. These have just cropped up in the last half an hour or so. Let's do a loop on the radar. And again, we're not going to spend a lot of time on the current radar when I'm recording this, because most of you are watching well afterward. But at that point, yeah, raining at a pretty good clip. Cortland down to Vienna, over towards Sharon, over across 62, close to Mercer. Uh, So in many of the same places that had some hefty rain, earlier on. Some radar estimates uh, near the state line, especially in out into Mercer County from the earlier activity. We had a good inch to an inch and a half or so, pretty common by these radar estimates. And again, we're adding on to some of these totals early on this evening. Now, severe weather this evening, hail, damaging winds, not very likely here locally. Uh, More likely off to our west. Uh, Tornado watch out this evening in Chicago. A lot of this activity is kind of lining up along a stationary boundary, a front that's just sort of stalled or hung up across the area. Now this is actually going to start moving, so it's not going to be stationary much longer. It's going to start moving off to the north, and that will take a lot of the activity with it as we go into the overnight and allow us to dry things out for a time overnight. The severe weather outlook for the rest of this evening into the overnight, the level 2 out of level 5 slight risk extends into northwest Ohio. Wouldn't be surprised if we had some severe thunderstorm watches at some point issued out here. Um, Again, our severe weather risk locally, not very high, but certainly a little too much rain in some localized areas. That's going to be a possibility before our evening is through. Now, tomorrow, this is what we want to focus on in this evening's video because this is tricky business tomorrow. Uh, With the midday update today, the Storm Prediction Center expanded the level two slight risk of severe weather to include more real estate. Just about all of eastern, central, and southern Ohio, a good chunk of West Virginia, and a good chunk of Pennsylvania now under that level two slight risk of severe weather, but it is not a given that we're going to have severe weather, certainly, and we'll get into why here momentarily. Just a reminder, uh, just in case you kind of lost track of what some of these terms mean, because we haven't had much severe weather in the last few months, level two slight risk, fairly common around here, fairly, uh, uh, you know, common occurrence in spring and summertime, especially 20 to 25 times a year. That's the average number of times we're under that slight risk, but we technically haven't had one in our area now since early April. So it's been a little while. Uh, Enhanced risk, uh, that's a one to three times a a year kind of a thing. Very rare to see moderate and high risks in eastern Ohio and western PA. They become a little more common, especially moderate risks, once you're out into western Ohio and into other parts of the lower Great Lakes and the Midwest. All right, so timing things out tomorrow. We're going to show you some modeling here in just a second. But generally what we're looking at is sometime between three and eight as the window that we have the highest risk of thunderstorms that will be capable 
of producing wind damage and hail. And yes, we do have an isolated tornado risk uh, in, the, in the mix for tomorrow because we've got a lot of wind energy and wind shear aloft. That's something that can't be ruled out. The big question is, how many storms will be out there to take advantage of a favorable environment? And some of the weather modeling today, the trends have been to take a lot of activity and place it more to our south. So this is you know early evening. Now this latest run suggests there's maybe two distinct areas of thunderstorms. One diving to our south and more of a problem for Parkersburg, Marietta, Charleston, places like that. And maybe another closer to the front in our viewing area. Now this, front, this idea is not necessarily shared by a lot of our current short range modeling. We're gonna see what uh, the evening trends are, but generally the trends today have been for this front to maybe push in a little bit faster and cut off the, the supply of high moisture uh, for our area, especially in our northern viewing area tomorrow afternoon, reducing the chances of severe weather, especially in areas say north of Route 30. Um, that's been the trend today. Will that trend continue into this evening? That's an open question as of you know seven o'clock or so when I'm recording this. But if that trend were to continue, the severe weather risk overall here locally may not be that high tomorrow um, because uh, again, the best moisture content may stay to our south. What my, what my gut feeling is, is that this may not happen right here, but some of this activity that initially goes in Southern Ohio may try to sneak northward enough before the late afternoon and early evening is through that we might have an emerging severe weather risk grazing our viewing area, places like East Liverpool, uh, Newcastle maybe, uh, certainly closer to Pittsburgh. Um, that's my gut feeling on how this transpires. And the farther north in our viewing area you are, maybe you just don't have a whole lot to worry about tomorrow. That's my gut feeling, but again, we're gonna keep an eye on the model trends this evening. Either way, Friday looks like a pretty decent day uh, with a fair amount of afternoon sun. A uh, day kind of similar to yesterday. Um, seasonable warmth, just a classic July day. And then moisture increases Saturday with a chance for a shower and storm by the afternoon on our Saturday. So again, nationally, the heat, a big story. And this massive heat ridge is going to park over the southwest for the next several days. So this is all the way through the end of the weekend, just baking underneath this. I mean, it could flirt with upper 120s in Death Valley, California underneath this. Now, as we head into next week, this heat ridge will actually start to expand east, but not very far northward. So it'll turn pretty hot next week in, in places like New Orleans, uh, Birmingham, Atlanta, places like that. But for us, it just doesn't come far enough north, and we're still in this kind of northwesterly flow next week, which does not mean chilly weather by any stretch of the imagination, but it will make it so we're kind of protected from the highest heat. Um, so I don't see a 93, 94 degree day anytime soon around here. The best we'll probably do is middle 80s, maybe upper 80s on a couple of occasions over the next seven days or so. Now going out 10 days or so, maybe we get some hotter weather at times, but even that's pretty questionable on, on some of the current modeling. But here's the next 10 days, generally speaking, pretty close to a little above average for daytime highs. That means a lot of days between say 82 and 86, 87 degrees. Nothing to write home about for the second half of July, uh, that is for sure. I do think it'll, you know, has the potential to be a fairly active pattern. I think we'll have a decent dry stretch early next week, but it may turn a little unsettled again later next week. Uh, as I mentioned in previous editions of Weather for Weather Geeks before my time off, uh, I think our drought for the summer has already peaked. Um, we're gonna have some periods of dry weather, of course, for the rest of the summer, but the real estate covered by the drought designation likely peaked a few weeks ago. Uh, we've already seen a more active pattern in the last few weeks, and I think that general trend will continue for the foreseeable future. All right, so thanks for tuning back in to Weather for Weather Geeks. Welcome aboard anyone who's new to these videos. Uh, again, I just had some time off, so we haven't posted one of these in about nine days, but uh, most weekdays that I work, these go online on my YouTube and social media sometime between 7.15 and 7.45 p.m., so look for them most weekdays. Have a great night, everyone.